Coming up on today's Airborne, MVP introduces its new light sport aircraft. The One Week Wonder project is off to a good start, and Bidnick's King receives certification for its KSN 770-765. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. This week we're coming to you from EAA AirVenture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. A new aircraft that is designed to take off from runways, water, ice, and snow has been introduced at EAA AirVenture. The MVP Aero is claiming it's the world's most versatile plane. This new class of all-season airplane is targeted for people who love the outdoors and want to enjoy it with an airplane. More than just an amphibian, the unique lifting canopy turns the forward part of the fuselage into a deck that can also be converted into a closed camper. While these attributes are exciting, MVP Aero says the most significant and game-changing quality is that it will do more than simply fly from one place to another. It will also support and play an active role in many great outdoor activities, including camping, fishing, hunting, exploring, relaxing, and more. The company currently plans for the MVP to first be offered as an experimental amateur built kit, then as an experimental light sport aircraft, and finally as a fully produced special light sport aircraft. It's expected for the kit version to be produced in about three years. On the first day of EAA AirVenture Oshkosh, the One Week Wonder Project began to spread its wings. The event began at 8 o'clock sharp when EAA's chairman, Jack Pelton, started the master timekeeping clock. The One Week Wonder Zenith 750 Cruiser would begin life as any kit purchaser would receive the materials. Workers and watchers were there as Pelton addressed the gathering and started the clock. Over 100 dedicated volunteers and helpers were there to get things started. These volunteers have had experience with aircraft home building before and will help guide and teach other participants as they sign the logbook and join in on the project. It wasn't long before the packing materials were scattered about as parts were removed and placed on the tables. And as soon as the parts were laid out, the volunteers started setting things up. Within 15 minutes, other people were asking how they could join in, and the participation of more people began. This is a project for everyone, and it looks like it's going to be a big hit. You're watching Airborne. We'll be right back after these messages with more news from EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The Bendix King KLR-10 Lift Reserve Indicator is now available for certified aircraft. It is an affordable, intuitive device for angle of attack awareness. Mounted on the glare shield, KLR-10 provides visual and audible lift cues while scanning for traffic or monitoring the runway on approach. A real airplane, not just a toy. The Airplane Factory Sling is a high-performance two-place LSA that fits the needs of private individuals, flight schools, and flying clubs alike, and has been called one of the best handling LSAs on the market. Check it out at www.airplanefactory.com. ForeFlight Mobile gives you better situational awareness, more productivity, and simplified decision-making in one elegant app. Start your 30-day trial today and discover the joy of flying with ForeFlight. Trig Avionics, presenting the world's smallest certified Modest transponder with matching VHF comm radios that'll easily fit in the tightest panel space. Contact your approved Trig dealer now. Trig, smart, affordable, and future-proof. Two hundred and ninety-five and counting. That's the number of lives saved so far by the revolutionary BRS airframe parachute. See and read why BRS can keep you safe at www.brsparachutes.com. 
Welcome back to Airborne from Whitman Regional Field in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Bendix King has confirmed that it's received TSO certification for its KSN 770-765. The KSN 770 and KSN 765 are WAS-enabled integrated multifunction display navigators that optimize flight data and situational awareness from departure to arrival. The KSN 770-765 combines touchscreen buttons and knobs, presenting a hybrid interface that offers pilots the choice of how they want to interface with the unit. It also provides on-screen keyboard control and eight-position joystick for additional data entry and control. The displays can be easily configured for as little or as much information as desired, including a single-screen or split-screen view. It also includes a navigation communication radio, WASP GPS in-route and approach navigation system, and a cursor control device. The unit includes charts, maps, display of traffic, and optional interfaces to weather radar and enhanced ground proximity warning systems. On the first day at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh, Jim Campbell had the opportunity to talk with Congressman Todd Rakita about his latest legislative efforts involving the third class medical. Sir, with all due respect, you wait for things from Washington, you wait for things from Washington, and you wait for things from Washington. How long are we going to be waiting? Well, in terms of third class medical, I mean, that's, it's part of the legislative process and now the rulemaking process. I mean, our founders designed this great experiment not to go quickly. And when things are working right in a lot of senses, uh, they will move slowly but deliberately. And I think that's what your question goes to. You know, is there going to be a deliberate effort or not? I will tell you this, there is a deliberate effort. Uh, we have a lot of co-sponsors on, on this bill we, from the biggest caucus uh, in Congress, which is the GA caucus, 239 members, 124 on the bill. We've got to keep adding to that. <clears throat> the worst thing that can happen is if your viewers and readers stopped showing their interest, because that allows other things to take center stage. And we have got to keep pushing for this. We're a small group compared to other constituencies, uh, but we're well organized. We bring a lot of credibility. Uh, we're a good group of people. We're a good group, group of civic. Um, uh, missionaries, I call them citizens, was called in times past. <laughs> and uh, we just got to keep uh, our focus on this. It's, it's moving in the right direction. It's moving with good speed. Sonex Aircraft announced that orders are now being accepted for the long-anticipated Aero V Turbo, with deliveries beginning in the fourth quarter of 2014. The Aero V Turbo is rated as a 100 horsepower engine at sea level and yields significant performance enhancement to the Sonex line of aircraft without breaking the bank. Price of the Aero V Turbo is $10,995, and an Aero V Turbo upgrade package is being made available for installation with existing Aero V engines, even those already installed and flying, at a price of $3,995. In a Sonics aircraft, the Aero V Turbo will yield a rate of climb of up to 1,300 feet per minute and a TAS at 8,000 feet of 175 miles per hour. Designed with simplicity in mind, the Aero V Turbo is intended for use with fixed pitch or ground adjustable propellers. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news from EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. Small, light, and ADS-B compatible. The Sandia Aerospace STX-165 Mode AC Transponder provides an uncommon value for today's aircraft. Check it out now at www.sandia.aero. Concorde Platinum Series batteries are available for all aircraft and offer extra cranking power, resulting in less draw on the battery per cycle for longer life. Visit booth 2053 at Oshkosh. Concorde, for the heart of your aircraft. The debate is no longer about upgrading GA aircraft with NextGen, it's about financing it. The NextGen GA Fund is about doing just that. Find out more at www.nextgenfund.com. The Evolution Flight Display System from Aspen Avionics delivers unique reliability and safety features to GA pilots and is truly the most flexible and affordable EFIS available. Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics. Waco Classic Aircraft now offers the Great Lakes 2T1A2. Inspired by the classic YMF5D, it's smaller but with 180 horsepower, simple avionics, and fully aerobatic. Waco lets you fly simply for the fun of it. www.wacoaircraft.com 
This Aero TV segment is brought to you by iFlight Planner. It's time to elevate your flight planning experience with General Aviation's most comprehensive suite of easy to use flight planning tools. Make the switch and plan your next flight with iFlight Planner. The aviation industry is far too automated and impersonal. Levels of care, service, and focus on customers have faded. Concierge provides premier customer care, leading our industry on a return to service. Find us at www.concierge.aero. Who doesn't love to fly on a beautiful day? Views like these are half the reason you got a pilot's license in the first place. But as we all know, conditions change quickly. Sure, you've trained, but how often have you used that training in actual conditions? That's where the IMC Club comes in. If it's important to becoming a better pilot, we've got it covered. Because at IMC Club, our goal is to help pilots everywhere to be safer, smarter, and ready for anything. Welcome back to Airborne at Oshkosh. I'm Ashley Hale. Superior Air Parts FAA certified 180 horsepower Vantage engine is to be used on Cessna 172 aircraft. Jim Campbell talks with Superior's Keith Chatton. Keith, opening day of Oshkosh, there's obviously a lot of items uh, all clamoring for attention. Tell us what's new. Uh, well, what's new at Superior Air Parts is uh, we've just introduced a, uh, a 172 STC and th that takes our Vantage engine and installs it in the, in the 172. Just a straight drop in, it's very simple, it's designed to be very economical so that the consumer can get flying. What are you bringing to the mix with this engine? Are there any upgrades? What does this mean down the line to the consumer in terms of reliability and warranty and so forth? I'll start that answer backwards. We have the best warranty in the business and the reports we get from the pilots are that the engines are smoother. We've made a substantial effort in the balancing uh, better than anybody else in the business. We also uh, have, have several advantages in the engine, including uh, some advanced lubrication systems. We uh, direct pressure lubricate the thrust face on the crankshaft. We uh, provide oil from both sides so that it prevents the issue of, of, of slow lubrication during startup and the things like that. Where does this engine and the rest of your product line stand in regards to being able to utilize fuels of the future? We start with the, the pilot right now, and, and we're not going to leave the pilots right now behind. We're going to do everything we can to keep them flying. We're doing things like certifying operation of the engine on unleaded fuel, although the unleaded fuel is not yet part of this STC. Uh, but we also consider the, the future and the other fuels and things as we go, we're looking at various engine programs that we can't yet discuss that, that may have some other alternative fuels. Lots is going on here at AirVenture and we were able to catch up with Avidine's Tom Harper to talk about the certification of the IFD 540. We're thrilled to announce here at the show that we've uh, certified the IFD 540 and deliveries have already started. That's a real game changer for us as a company. Now we've got a full stack of avionics, audio panel, transponder, the 540 and our autopilot, so gives customers a, a, a more choice in the, in the market, and I think that's a good thing. On the eve of Air Venture 2014, ANN's Jim Campbell sat down with EAA Chair Jack Pelton. We'll be sharing portions of that interview with you all this week. Today's segment features discussion of the FAA, as well as the Thunderbirds' appearance at Oshkosh. Jack, it's the eve of, here we go again, Oshkosh 2014. Um, I guess the biggest thing uh, to ask right up front is, what kind of year has it been? You know, it's been an, <laughs> every time we have these conversations, I can preference it with an, it's been another interesting year. Um, you know, coming out of Air Venture last year, we had to figure out what we were going to do with the FA. So that was a big part of um, the end of 2013 was getting an agreement in place uh, reluctantly with the FA to ensure that this event can continue on. So we got that done, and fortunately, we're secure for the next nine years. But we'll also see during reauthorization if we can maybe write this and get out of having to, to pay what we're having to pay for controllers. So we're not giving up that fight. And then we took on a new challenge, and that was to have the military demonstration team, the Thunderbirds, perform for the first time ever at Air Venture. You know, and Paul and Tom had said, we haven't done that for a reason, and I think we're starting to understand why, because the <laughs> logistics of doing it is incredible. I mean, you have to increase the aerobatic box significantly. That disrupts businesses and residents on the east side of the field. But we decided to, to give it a try, and we've had good cooperation, but put in an incredible amount of effort to make that 
make that happen. Those folks are, are relocated for one hour on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but um, everybody's, everybody's lined up to make that happen and they will be here. And you know, we think that that will be a, a big upside to the, the closing weekend to get some young people out here. We're not intending to do this every year. Mm -hmm. We just are gonna, gonna try this this year and see how it goes. Well, that's one of the uh, issues that comes up with bringing in a jet team, that once you've done it, you're expected to always do it. But then again, this is Oshkosh, and Oshkosh has a few other attractions going for it. You know, we're cautious of that, but we know that, like next year, we want to focus a little more on space. We want to get Bert back, who has committed to come back next year with some interesting possibilities that he may bring. So, you know, we can mix it up year after year, and we don't think we have to be dependent on a military jet team, and we'll continue to find the right things that people want to come see. And some of that, you know, you can't look out three years from now and say, what is going to be the new most innovative thing that will attract people to our venture. We don't have that vision today, but as the year goes on, we'll figure it out. Okay, so here we are, 2014. The administrator's showing up again. Been a while. From your standpoint, where do you think this administration has the most to answer to from a standpoint of the sport aviation community? What do you expect to be the hot topics? I think number one, without a doubt, if they come here and have no progress made on the medical exemption, they better get out of town pretty quickly. I think that is going to have not only our members, but sport aviation in general, really, really fired up because there's been a lot of talk and no movement on the FA's part. The legislators are trying to weigh in. We have uh, Representative Rokita who has sponsored a bill. He will be here Monday to talk about his particular bill. So... Uh, I'll tell you, if I was the administrator, I wouldn't come with a, a plan and, and an announcement of some sort. And I can't tell you that he is, because they are not, uh, they're just not saying at this point. Mm -hmm. So that's going to have membership uh, asking some of the very, very hard questions. I don't think he will also be able to duck the reimbursement for the air traffic controllers. I think that there's a lot on the 100 low lead replacement fuel you know, there's good progress being made through that PAFI committee that's going on, but he's going to have to stand up and share some positions. And then the whole next-gen issue. Earlier this year, I had some meetings and was very disappointed in hearing that the implementation ADSB out, they're receiving erroneous signals and codes, and there's just a lot of questions going on that are going to cause people to be reluctant to equip. And then there's the whole cost relative to equipage, and what benefit are we going to get out of it? That's certainly a GA concern. All these are items that add up to the bigger question. And the bigger question is, really, where is the FAA relative to sport aviation? You know, are we going to be equal to, from a national standpoint, of being recognized, being part of their planning, their strategy, the system architecture that they're working on, or are we going to be left out? And I think that's a question that concerns me because there's moments where you see so much focus on the airline side of it, and we either are an afterthought or not well integrated into the plan. And I think they got to stand up and talk about that. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And we'll be bringing you live coverage from EAA AirVenture all this week. So stay tuned to get all the latest up-to-date news on aviation's biggest event. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.